Did you know Super Awesome Mix has an app? Go to the Apple App Store today and download Super Awesome Mix. It's free. You could start creating and sending your own digital mixtapes in just a few clicks. Also, there's links to our Instagram account and a link where you can follow your favorite podcast. Speaking of which... Welcome back to another Super Awesome Mix. My name is Matt Sidholm alongside my co-host and co-founder of Super Awesome Mix, Samer Abu Salbi. Samer, how are we doing this week? I am doing well. It's February, which means it's time for another new music mix. And of all the ones that we've done so far, <laughs> this one is really, really good. There has been so much good music that has come out in the last couple of months. It's awesome. I think it's just that time of year. I like to give us credit. I think it's us getting better yes. at putting these mixes You're together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. I was listening to this and all the songs you found and even the ones that I had found and put on the mix. And like, I don't know, the second time through, I was like, oh, man, this is such a good mix. I really like it. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. I listened to it a couple of times and, and on a walk. And that's always a good measure whenever I'm like, you know, I listen to the mixes, obviously. And most of them I enjoy. <laughs> Some of them I enjoy a lot. Uh <laughs> And this is in that category. <laughs> you know, if I'm being honest, listeners, there are some mixes where it's like, well, I listened to it once and that will be the only yeah, time. <laughs> exactly. Right. And I'm sure the listeners feel the same way. Right. Like sometimes they, they dial into exactly. a mix. They love it. Other times, not so much. And that's OK. Um, but exactly. hey, you know, like I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with this first song that you pick. I mean, this is just classic. A classic offering from this band. Um, so you get us started with Lux Eterna by Metallica. Yeah, their 11th studio album. Um, incredible. You know, whenever we are in our 11th <laughs> uh, season, we can definitely still draw from Metallica's <laughs> right. very, very broad, <laughs> broad base of music. Um, so album coming out April 14th this year. They've had two singles off of their new album. This one is Screaming Suicide. Um Wow. I mean, this song just absolutely rocks like this to me sounds like they're going back to their 80s sound, you know, just like really heavy shredding guitars. Uh, Lars on the drums. Unbelievable. Like, I just love him. You know, I love the, the yelling of full speed or nothing over and over. Like, this is a song that will get you amped up. I feel like it's definitely going to be a motivational track in my super awesome you show, because if you if you need to feel amped up before you go into like a meeting or I don't know, you're going to go run a, a marathon like this song is a good one to get you <laughs> to get you going. It's great. Yeah. And you don't even need lyrics, right? Like, don't even worry no. about the lyrics. I'm not going to call anything out. I mean, it is just energy from beginning to end. And uh, I loved it. I was like, this is awesome. And you're right. It totally brought me back to like that 1980s kind of feel, sort of that heavy metal type thing. Um, yeah. But great choice. Great choice to start off the mix. And, and honestly, it could start off any day, I feel like. <laughs> yes. If you want to have an amped up day, just pop this song on <laughs> this and then, you know, master of puppets or something and, and you're on your way. Um, all right. So a different, you know, a little bit of a vibe shift. But again, every single song in this mix was just absolutely excellent. And I think this one came to us from a listener suggestion, which is absolutely I love that. So this is Try Jesus by L. King. Yeah. Longtime listener. Uh, Instagram handle at dad. Oh, three girls. Um, he re reached out to us and I loved it because. He recommended this album and was immediately like, Matt, you'll love it. Samri, you might even like it. Uh, so <laughs> L. King, L. King's a country artist. And so, uh, yeah, he was just immediately, he, he kind of has gotten to know us over the years uh, doing the show here. So I, I just love the message that he sent. And he was spot on. I love this whole album. I listened to the whole thing. And uh, there's one single on here that she has with Miranda Lambert called uh, I'm Drunk and I Don't Want to Go Home. Um, that's gotten some radio play. So that one's been on the radio for a little bit. Um, but I picked this song just because I, one, I love the kind of organ in the background, giving it kind of this gospel feel. And, um, you know, it's a little bit tongue in cheek uh, of like try mm -hmm. Jesus because it's like nothing else is working. So she's kind of complaining about all these things going on in her life and things not quite working the way they should. 
And uh, in the end, it's like, maybe, maybe I'll try Jesus, see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> I just think <laughs> that's uh, kind of a funny message, kind of funny way to phrase that. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a really good country song. Yeah. So um, to your point earlier, he was spot on with his message because I, I really enjoyed it. I liked the song. I also found myself smiling to it. Um, even the singer, Elle King, she she says of this, it's a perfect example of where if you just take it at face value, it's funny. Um, you know, and she says, because ultimately, I think we are magnets and every relationship is a mirror. So she's just, you know, kind of singing about how she keeps finding herself in bad relationships, whether she's the one who's not enjoying it or the partner's not enjoying it. And she thinks that she's kind of just like attracting that energy. So in the end, she's like, maybe I'll just try Jesus. And so, yeah, you're right. I think I think it is meant to kind of be cute in that way. Um, but I really liked it. I, I enjoyed the sound of it a lot. Yeah, I, you know, I have been slowly, slowly being converted over to to the dark side, so to speak. <laughs> of, uh, I've been We're trying some to be careful. Sound. I'm trying to be careful about what country I give to you and say I think you'll yes. like this, right? <laughs> Yep. All right. So your next pick, you went with Tropic Morning News by The National. Yeah. So this is um, coming off of their ninth studio album, uh, which I believe will be called The First Two Pages of Frankenstein, which makes me want to actually pick up that that book and read the first <laughs> two know. pages. I had that same thought. I was like, what are the t- <laughs> first two? I think I had to read that in high school. Like, do I remember the right. first two pages? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so really excited. You know, I've talked a lot in the last couple of, in the last like six months or so about how I, you know, discovered the national last year and really delve into their music. And, and, um, so I'm very excited to, to hear new stuff coming from them. Um, you know, this song apparently was like a turning point for them writing the studio album. Unfortunately, their lead singer, Matt has been suffering from severe depression. And he said that, you know, he found a way to kind of write about this song and then that just unlocked the rest of the album. So it was like he kind of overcame this writer's block that he was suffering from. Um, the one thing that really struck me from the song and the line that I keep coming back to is where he sings, you can stop and start an athlete's heart. How do I feel about it? I would love to have nothing to do with it. I would like to move on and be through with it. And presumably he wrote this long before the issue with Damar Hamlin, the Bills player, Um <laughs> which, you know, like many millions of people, I was watching that game live when that happened. And I mean, that has still stuck with me all these all these weeks later. Um, it is it, I, I can't overcome the the thought of, you know, watching this guy basically die in the field for five minutes and then and then be brought back. And thank goodness he was and he's healthy and, and all that is wonderful news. But I, I agree with the sentiment of like, I want nothing to do with that. Like, I don't I don't want to watch a sport where people can just die in the field and, and then we are supposed to be OK with it. So I, I think I like that line in here in particular. He kind of like, I don't know, even like manifested this in a way. It's really bizarre. I yeah, I had that same thought while I was listening to it, it, not even like looking at the lyrics the first time I was listening to this. And that line jumped out at me and I'm just like, well, he couldn't have written this song like last week. Like, what well, what is that? You know, like right. just the fact that this just happened in the news and now here's this song. I would, yeah, that that really stuck with me too, hearing the song. But the, the whole thing, I thought it was such a great expression. And it's interesting that you talk about how he was in this severe depression when he wrote it, which again, falls in line with our good things coming out of bad situations from these artists, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But um, I just thought he did such a great job of, of expressing kind of sadness and confusion. And then like, you know, there's this tropic morning news he refers to, and then he kind of forgets about it for a second. And then we're kind of back into it. It, it was a really well written song, uh, like of different emotions uh, it, without the music guiding it. Right. It was just the words guiding right, it. And I thought right. that was really, it was really well done. Yeah, I think that's exactly why a lot of people, myself included, now are, are drawn to the national. I think his writing is is amazing, uh, and he's he's a good storyteller with every song. All right, so another vibe shift here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hit the dance floor, and we're going with Sleepwalker by Ava Max. Yeah, so you know this is not any any longtime listeners of the show will be like, why why did Matt pit, pick this song? Well. Ava Max is definitely in the rotation for my nine and a half year old daughter. So I get to hear a lot of her music when, uh, when she's <laughs> controlling the, uh, controlling the radio. But, um, yeah, this one, I, I just thought it was a really well-written song. Um, and really, I mean, I like the dance beats. This whole album is actually pretty good 
without being too overproduced and, and like club mix kind of. Um, but yeah, I, I picked this one out because I kind of laughed while listening to it. It reminded me of, if you remember the movie, the 40 year old virgin where Steve Carell is mm-hmm. working at like the big box electronics store and his manager is played by Jane Lynch and she kind of yes. propositions him at some point. And, and then there's this moment where she kind of leans into him and just goes, I'll haunt your dreams. And I just thought that's all I could think of. When Ava Max is thinking is singing about being a sleepwalker and an obsession to whomever she's right. singing this song to, was that moment where Jane Lynch just warned Steve Carell that she will haunt his dreams. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that scene. She was magnificent she was. in that role. She's in the movie for a total of like two minutes, right? And she just steals yeah. every scene. <laughs> She's really good at that. Oh my God. Um, that's amazing. You're right. Like that's definitely the vibe of this. And and that's exactly what the singer was talking about. She's like kind of just singing through a lot of her confidence and being like, yeah, okay, you can like date me, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm a yeah, lot. That's you right. know, so be warned. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, all right. Your next pick, you go with love from the other side by fallout boy. Yeah, it's Fall Out Boy with new music. Like this, this kind of like shocked the internet. Millennials everywhere rejoiced because I think we all <laughs> we all really loved Fall Out Boy uh, all those years ago. But I mean, this song absolutely rocks. I it's another one that is like a turn it up type of a song for me. Um, I love the opening line where you know this metaphor of like model house life meltdown, still a modern dream let down. It kills me, and you know I think living in a model home as we learned from the show arrested development <laughs> is not a great place <laughs> you know everything is like supposed to be nice but of course nothing is really nice it's all fake and and i think like you know he's singing a lot towards this kind of like feeling of like oh you know everything might be kind of like a model home he talks about like this rat race of like we're supposed to just keep getting ahead and keep getting ahead and keep doing the work and go after everything and and how that can be exhausting and it's like for what you know it's like kind of this fake veneer of of uh, doing all of this so I think like lyrically it's really interesting but you know just from the sound point of view also it was one that I found myself listening to over and over again and, and wanting to be really loud and I just yeah I love that that vibe from fallout boy they do a really good job at that yeah and musically I thought the way this one started out it was so different from your typical fallout boy song it, it begins and ends very differently there was almost a symphonic feel to it and then you get kind of the you know, the, the more familiar guitar sound kicks in and you're right, tons of energy from there and it'll get you fired up. But yeah, I really like that. I think it just kind of started and finished a little bit differently than uh, a lot of their music. But yeah, I, and I love it when bands kind of try something new like that, you know, mm-hmm. so really good stuff. Yeah, same. Yeah. Nice. All right. Track number six. Um, we're going to have to check that explicit box here. Thank you, Quinn92. Um, and it is uh, his new track, FOMO, parentheses, don't do cool shit. <laughs> I thought on title alone, this had to make the mix. I was like, this is just great. Yes. That was immediately when I looked at his new album, I was drawn to this one. Um, and this guy's got such a cool, like kind of hip hop, smooth sound to it. Um, and this is just kind of a funny song because he's just talking about being in this relationship and whatever, but it's like, Hey, but if you're doing something fun, I mean, you're going to be a little sad that I'm not there. Right. Or or you just won't do it. (laughs) And, and I just think it's hilarious because that is very typical in a relationship where it's like one is doing something fun at a given moment because maybe they're on a trip or something. And the other is kind of doing, you know, back home doing laundry (laughs) or whatever it is. Right. right? (laughs) And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah. you, you went and did that without me? Oh, come on, you know? <laughs> so I just, uh, yeah, I, I just love the the um, the title, obviously, but also just the whole sentiment of this song. But then the way it's sung, it just sounds like this really cute kind of love song. Right, yeah. No, I, I really like that element. It, it kind of actually gave me a little bit of, like, stress because it reminded me of, like, a bad relationship I was in where – you know, any single time my partner was out doing anything, it's like, wait, what, what are you up to? And like, do I really trust that? <laughs> do I trust this relationship? It was bad. Um, not, a, not a good place to be. And so it kind of triggered that a little bit, but beyond, you know, beyond the triggering of, of stress, I thought it was a great song. Um, 
<laughs> and I, I mean, I love so much of Quinn 92's other songs. So I'm going to let, I'm going to let, let this, this one slide go. in yeah, terms of. That's fair. That's yeah. Fair. Yeah. I guess it could be stress inducing if like the other person really does have a, like if you get in trouble in this situation, right? Like here, he's just being very sweet about right. like, don't do this stuff without me. But um, yeah, if that other person's like, just get seriously jealous, I guess it would be pretty triggering. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that makes total sense. Um, all right, Sam, before we get to our next song, okay, I want to talk to you about another, uh, a new podcast that's kind of a friend of ours uh, that everyone needs to add to their list, Nakedly Examined Music. Okay, it's a, sh- it's a show about songs and songwriting. Every episode, host Mark Lindsay Mayer speaks with a songwriter about three of their songs, and you get to hear those songs in full. So it explores what motivates creative decisions at every step of a song's creations from the initial idea to the final recording. It also provides a picture of how a songwriter's work has changed over the course of their career. This is ideal content for introducing you to new music, or if you're going to come away, you know, you come away with some new favorite songs, but then you're also going to learn about some legendary artists. It really is cool because the artists come on and really do kind of break things down as to how they're constructing these songs. But you'll definitely come away a better listener and a more inspired creator. So start listening today, whenever you, wherever you listen to your new podcast, and uh, find the show at Nakedly Examined Music. Dot com. So let's move on to track seven, Sam. Your next pick is Repeat by July Talk. Yeah, so this is off of an album called Remember Never Before, which I really like that. Um, I'm having a hard time deconstructing what that might even mean. Remember Never Before. But uh, July Talk is a new discovery for me. So this is one of those ones where, um, you know, the the all-knowing algorithm put the song in front of me. And I was like, okay, I, I actually really dig this. And so I'm, I'm excited to, like, spend more time listening to the rest of the album and, and getting to know this, this group a little bit more. It's a band from Toronto. Um, their singers, Peter and Leah. So kind of two lead vocals, um, a male and a female voice, and absolutely love how this sounds. It kind of reminds me of like a darker version of The Stars, if you're familiar with that band, also Canadian band. Um, but, you know, I just really like kind of the the mood of this. Um, the line that also really makes me kind of laugh is uh, where they sing, you say it took 30 years to find some meaning. Are you effing kidding me? And I think that that's really funny because sometimes we are frustrated Um you know, with ourselves, but certainly with other people, whenever it's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm rediscovering myself and blah, blah, blah. And, and you're like, it took you 30 years to discover <laughs> that, you know? <laughs> and hey, sometimes it does. That's totally fair. But I think we all have those moments or those people in our life where they're just, you know, constantly rediscovering themselves and you can get, you can get hard to keep, to keep up with them. <laughs> That's a great point. I had not thought about that, uh, listening to this song. Um, yeah, I was not familiar with these guys either. And I think, uh, you know, the male and female voice, I think those are the things that stood out to me in this one. I love the end of the song where they both come in and are just kind of alternating like that. I think that was really well done. And I love how that sounds. Um, but yeah, really cool sound to this one. Um, and yeah, just a just a good, I mean, it, it feels like maybe a couple here that is going through a tough time in a relationship, but or maybe that's just what the two different voices does to you know, my brain is immediately takes me to something like that. But um, yeah, I thought it was a really interesting song. Nice. All right. Uh, track eight here. You went with One Night Left by Cheat Codes and Mackenzie Porter. Okay. So Cheat Codes, is this is off their album, One Night in Nashville. And they are an electronic music DJ trio. And uh, what they did was just put this album together where they collaborated with these country artists and um, just did you know, different songs. Some of them are remakes of the country artist songs. Some of them are just brand new songs, but yeah, Mackenzie Porter is a country artist out of Canada. And, um, yeah, I mean, the first few chords of this sound like kind of a conventional country song, and then you really get kind of the electronic influence kicking in. Um, and it's a pretty straightforward song. Like if I had one night left, I'd spend it with you. Right. But, um, yeah, I just I just like the collaboration here. You know, some of the new country that I complain about, if you've listened to the show a long time, it's country songs that that almost have this vibe, but it's like they're they're just straight country artists saying like, hey, this is country music. Uh, and I don't love that, but I don't mind this as a collaboration where it's like, hey, we're working with these guys who, you know, do electronic music and this is kind of a mashup. And so 
I, I appreciated this more than just kind of the straight uh, new country, if you will, that, that sounds a little bit like this. Yeah, no, th that makes a lot of sense. I, I really love cheat codes. I was actually like pleasantly surprised that you had a cheat code song <laughs> on here because I like they, to keep you on your toes. Sam, it, okay. <laughs> you do. You do. Um, I would use a lot of their music and remixes in uh, in spin classes uh, whenever I was a spin instructor. So there's they have a lot of good music for like, you know, moving to. So I really like that. Um, you know, it's kind of like EDM pop is the way I, I might like categorize this because it is like electronic dance music, but it's like a little bit more accessible than, than some of the deep tracks you'll hit in the EDM world. Um, and I think part of that accessibility is bringing on like a country voice, you know, and, and they do this a lot with with other like pop artists as well. So it was really nice. Yeah, I like it. And I like the, you know, like you said, it's a, it's a very straightforward, cute kind of love song of of just wanting to be with someone. And the line that I really like out of the song is, and if the world was going down in flames, if I'm with you, I'd be OK, um, which is really sweet. And also, I think, you know, maybe it's another triggering statement because I think we all feel that maybe the world is going down in flames. <laughs> but hey, as you know, as long as we're with people that we like and they're not out doing cool stuff without us, like all is well, all is well. <laughs> <laughs> I think my goal for next month's new music mix is to try not to trigger you. I'm going to try to find. I mean, yeah. everything, everything is triggering. I'm like a rabbit in like a, <laughs> in a shooting range. I'm freaked out. <laughs> well, maybe that appropriately leads to our next song because it's titled Everything Is by Neutral Milk Hotel. Exactly. Yeah. Everything is just overwhelming. <laughs> uh, you can finish. You can finish the sentence. But um, yes, Neutral Milk Hotel. So this is a, a really, I can't think of a better word than like a bizarre band, I find. Like their sound is so unique. Um, it's really, really like heavily down sampled, uh, you know, on purpose. I think their songs are just like weird and like good weird. I, I find that listening to them is like, this is so strange, but I can't stop listening to it. I absolutely love it. So this is, um, this is an extended EP off of their like 1995 EP called everything is, and they have these new demo songs, um, like you've passed and where you'll find me now. This song in particular, um, opens up this album and, and yeah, I just, I, I almost find it. It's like, has like a Wes Anderson vibe. I feel, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but like if, if his movies were a song, they might be this song. <laughs> um, because again, it's like kind of just, they're they're weird you know but they're like but again like good weird i don't know how else to describe it um but yeah so very very excited to you know i listened to this album already a couple times through there is one song on here that i find it really difficult to listen to there's like a lot of screaming and yelling and i i, I couldn't help myself i really try to listen to albums without skipping but i was like i gotta skip this song I, <laughs> it's not working for me um but everything else i i really loved so yeah neutral milk hotel everything is yeah they um they reminded me like just the sound of it didn't sound super like modern right and then i like looked it up and like you said it's from like a 1995 you know this was like one of their original releases um but yeah i think the wes anderson thing is really appropriate i wrote down ben queller as kind of a like sort of parallel to this you know like that kind of feel to it if you're familiar with his music at all but um you know, he's from Dallas. These guys are from like North Louisiana. Like maybe there's some crossover there. I don't know. Yeah, could there be. could be. Could be. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I thought it was, I think that your your description there is perfect is that it's a little weird. It's kind of like, what am I listening to here? And then it's like, well, no, I want them to, hold on, let them finish. Let, let them keep going. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Yeah. I, Maybe quirky is a better word yeah, for it. It's like quirky, I, I, like you're interested in yes, it. Yeah, I wanted to see where it went, right? And so that's, uh, no, it was, it was definitely really, really good from that respect because, you know, that's the whole point, right? Like you don't want to bail on a song after like 30 seconds. You want to kind of see it through. So right. this song definitely does that yeah. job. Nice. All right. Um, speaking of songs I did not want to bail on and I just absolutely loved, your track 10 is Dawn's featuring Maggie Rogers by Zach Bryan. Yeah. So, you know, Zach Bryan showed up uh, on our best of 2022 mix uh, with one of his songs there. And then, you know, seeing this collaboration with one of the show's favorites, you know, Maggie Rogers, I was like, I mean, how could this yes. not show up on a mix? Right. Um, but yeah, this one starts to build around like the 92nd mark when the when the chorus kicks in and then it slows back down again and Maggie Rogers' voice comes in. And um, 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it almost sounds like a, a couple fighting again in this one. You know, I know I referenced that earlier with the two different voices, but this one kind of gets at that a little mm-hmm. bit, but you know, that, that line, you know, I've wasted, I've wasted all my dawns on you. It's just like, that's a really powerful line of, you know, just kind of regret and, and maybe some anger. Uh, so I don't know. It just, I, that is just a great song. It sounds great. And, and both of their voices are just excellent. Yeah, I, I think this is, I mean, my experience with this song was, it was in this category of songs where I, I found myself just closing my eyes and like listening to it and really kind of sinking into the song because it is like this really beautiful, sad story that they're weaving with each other uh, throughout. And it does seem like it is like, you know, a, a couple that is very unhappy with one, other, one another. Um, the, the second verse where it's like, I get effed up just because I'm scared. Love's just another drug I've grown a victim to. So what do I do? Oh, what do I do? Um, you know, this feeling of like being in a bad relationship, and but you can't leave. You find yourself drawn to it, addicted to it, stuck in it. So yeah, a uh, beautiful song though. And both of their voices work so well together. I was yeah very happy to see Maggie Rogers uh, featured on, on this new music mix. Again, yeah, like you said, you know, a, a, a favorite of 2022 now. We'll see what happens in 2023. <laughs> and remember, she's like 22 years old. So we've got like 50 years of music <laughs> from her. So much music. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your last pick. You went with I Made It by Tones and I. Yeah. So Tones and I, um, new music from from them, uh, from her. And very, very excited. It's funny because as we'll see in a moment, she makes a double appearance yes. on this new music mix, which we did not plan, but it seemed to have worked out. But um, I absolutely love this song. This is a song I will be using on my Super Awesome You motivation mix because I think, you know, she's really speaking about like trying to sometimes we try to do something but our brain shuts it down and it's like, no, 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 you can't do that. That's not like, what are you trying to do? And I think the line that really sums that up for me is where she sings, when I was young, I tried to build a paper plane, but my head told me no. And I think that's great, right? Because, you know, the paper plane for me at least represents like flight and, and doing something daring and and changing up what a piece of paper is meant for. You know, it's supposed to just be something you write on or something you print for. And here you are turning into a plane. And so your brain is like, no, 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 this is all wrong. What are you doing? And I think often we find ourselves whenever we go out to try something new, like shutting ourselves down because it's new and it's different. So I just think it's like such a powerful song. Um, and she, yeah, she just has such a unique and beautiful voice that I, I I love. So I'm very excited for her to uh, be releasing new music and excited for this year as well from her. Yeah, I I loved everything about this song, right? Like just the sound of it, the sentiment. And, you know, she's best known for that Dance Monkey song, right? Which is just this very dancey kind of song and, and whatever. And you wouldn't think listening to that that she has this super soulful voice that she exhibits here or in the, in her other right. music. So I, I love that part of it too. It's just like, here's someone who, you know, we, we, we've had a mix on one hit wonders before. Right. And it's like, a lot of times those people have this, you know, unique thing that sets them apart and they have this big hit. And so I just thought it was great that it's like, wow, she's, she's super talented and she's getting to show that in these other ways and, and on these other tracks and not just kind of trying to produce, you know, the, the next version of Dance Monkey. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Which, yeah, can be folly. Um, I actually recently read about um, the artist who did um, Gangnam Style, yeah. Psy, and he said that he spent, like, all his years after that hit trying to basically produce another hit. And he, and I, I mean, from what I remember, I, I think he was very unhappy that he couldn't do it and he just felt like he was like failing and, and disappointing himself. And I think, yeah, sometimes like that's the problem is, is you just, you, you capture something in that one moment, but it's, it's, it's a moment. It's really hard to try to do that again. And so I appreciate the artists that just kind of lean into to other things and, and see where it goes from there. So that's awesome. All right. Our last track as, as promised featuring tones and I, uh, but this is chant by Macklemore. Yeah. Macklemore has a new album coming out this year. It's called Ben and that's uh that's his first name. Um, but yeah, tones and I helps him out on this track again, her voice, you know, is so powerful when she comes in. So it's like, if you, if you really like, you know, the track I made it, you're going to love her contribution to this one. And then uh, the rest of the time is just Macklemore kind of doing his thing. Right. And talking about, uh, I don't know, like so many of his lyrics, I think, get me fired up, 
you know, and get me motivated. And, uh, you know, one of them was here was I was supposed to be a one hit ringer. Now I got too many rings and not enough fingers. <laughs> I was like, he just, he just <laughs> does that. such a great job of, um, you know, I like, I just love his writing. And, and it's also interesting listening to his albums over the year because they have kind of evolved a little bit um, to, yes. you know, explore different topics, but also explore like his place now in the music world versus like where he was, right? So like early on, it was a very different story. Like we talk about that sometimes with rappers, how, you know, 20 years on, they're still talking about nobody Nobody thought I could make it. So there's still an element of that, but I do think there's a little bit of an evolution too in his lyrics. So um, yeah, great, great track. He's got a couple other singles off this new album that are out there now uh, that are also really good. And so looking forward to the whole thing when it comes out later this year. Me too. Yeah. And I think as he goes through his career, the lyrics become more reflective of his time in music and, and you know, everything that he's kind of gone through. And you're right, though, he still has that confidence. He's still like exuding that thing of like, hey, this is, you know, he sings here like this is my moment. They can't take my talent. They can't take my stripes. They can't erase my hours, which I think is a nod to the 10,000 hour song. Um, and I especially love he ends that with I'm from the underground. Anything above ground is a mountain. And I love that perspective of like, you know, for him doing just probably being able to produce music at all is like a huge win, you know, and, and it's about his art and about his craft. So um, I really think that's cool. Yeah, I'm super excited for his new album. For sure, it's going to be making a, a lot of appearances on our mix. <laughs> I would imagine so. <laughs> I would imagine so. Yes. Um, all right. Well, there you have it. Some new music um, for you this time. Uh, you know, this is our February version. We'll be back, like we said, every month with uh, a new music mix. And like, just like our, our follower at Dado Three Girls, I mean, feel free to reach out and say, hey, you guys got to listen to this new album. We love that. So follow us on Instagram at Super Awesome Mix. Um, rate the podcast. It helps other people find us. Um, but in the meantime, Samra and I will get to work on our next mix. So for Samra, this is Matt. And we'll see you next time. Super Awesome Mix is brought to you by DLM. Make shopping easy with DLM, the one-stop shop for all your casual clothing needs. Shop dlmsupplycode.com and enter the promo code AWESOME at checkout to save 15% off your first purchase. That's dlmsupplycode.com.